What's going on, hustlers? Back at you guys with another video. I'm in a creative mode today, so you guys are probably gonna see like four or five videos be pumped out um, in the same exact outfit. Um, but I wanna thank you guys so much for all the support on Instagram, all the support. Uh, I started posting on TikTok now, so go follow me on TikTok if you use that app. Um, and then yeah, go check me out on, on LinkedIn. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the five best certifications that you can have in government contracting. Now, some people talk about these certifications and they don't do a good job of explaining them. Some people talk about them and don't really know what they're applicable for. <sighs> and I actually already filmed this video. I filmed this video last week, but I kind of half asked it and I didn't really give you guys like enough good information in it. And I was like reading a Reddit thread and somebody was just complaining about how there wasn't like enough information on YouTube about government contracting and how like all this stuff is super surface level. And I just kind of was like, damn. And that was posted like maybe five months ago. So like before I started posting on YouTube, but I honestly just felt, I was like, damn, I guess that there's really just not enough good info being put out there for you guys. So I was like, I gotta redo this video and not just like slap it together. Anyways, let's get into the video. So number one, so I'm going to be doing, it's five certifications, but it's really a little bit more than five. So number one is going to be your JCP certification. That's your joint certification program. I want to say that's what it is. Yeah, joint certification program um, cert. So what JCP allows you to do is it allows you to get access to tech docs. Tech docs is just a fancy way or the government's way of saying blueprints. You might also hear them call be called drawings, right? Now, why would somebody want to get access to blueprints or to tech docs? Because this then gives them the opportunity to um, export those drawings and then send them to different manufacturers and make stuff on behalf of the government, right? So anything that can be manufactured on the basis of drawings is something that's called mil spec, which is short for military specification. Anything that's mil spec, there is no approved source for it. It means that anybody can make it as long as they're able to make it to the specifications set forth in the blueprints or the drawings, right? Now, you can reasonably assume that not just everybody gets access to these drawings and access to these blueprints, right? So you have to go through a strenuous process of filling out paperwork. And this cert is completely free, JCP cert is entirely free it just takes a long time to get they're just really backed up the esa which is the engineering support activity they're the people that have to approve the application right and then i also want to clarify that just because you have a jcp cert doesn't mean that you're going to have access to Ooh. oh my god i don't know what's wrong with me i had a big cup of matcha today and i got good sleep um the esa the engineering support activity they um, have to approve your JCP certification. And then just because you have your JCP cert doesn't even mean that you have access to all the documents, right? You can get access to about most, I would say about 80% of documents, right? Drawings and, and blueprints. And then that additional 20%, you might need another level of basically security clearance to access those drawings. But JCP is pretty good because I know in our instance, we have companies that we work with, like specifically wiring and harness companies, and like they'll just make the stuff to the specifications and anybody can make it. And if that company has past performance and we have past performance, and then we partner with them and then we submit the bid, right? And it's like, okay, this company's already made it, right? And then in bootcamp, we'll talk about how to become an approved source or how to get your name on the list um, of the approved source to basically become a company that can provide mil spec stuff and is the company that DLA says they want to go to. So that is a possibility you can do that. So that's cert number one, JCP certification. Huh. Number two, an ISO cert. So an ISO is a quality assurance cert or certification where an assessor is going to come and evaluate your processes. And when I say processes, this is going to be like, how are you making, what processes do you have in place to make sure you're not selling counterfeit goods? What processes do you have in place to make sure that you're compiling all the necessary uh, paperwork? What quality assurance processes do you have in place to make sure that you're not submitting anything that's like damaged or missing components um, to the US military, right? So ISO cert is like a big broad umbrella, right? 
And then there's ISO certifications for um, aviation. There's ISO certifications for marine parts. There's ISO certifications for automotive parts. And I'm sure that there's more. Those are just the only ones that I could, I'm pretty sure there's, oh yeah, there's IT ISO certifications, right? And they're all denoted by a certain set of numbers. The most common one for us um, is ISO 9001, which I want to say is primarily aviation based. Um, and that might also cover some portion of the automotive industry as well. So your ISO cert, that needs to be done by an assessor and you have to pay for that. So the price ranges from as cheap as like $2,000 to I've seen some companies offering it for like $12,000, right? And the difference is, is, I guess some companies are just more reputable than others. And then also the, the industry that you're trying to get the quality assurance certification in, I'm sure it's a lot more strenuous to get an aviation certification than it is for like an automotive in, um, uh, certification. Because if something breaks on your car, you just pull over on the side of the road. If something breaks on a plane, well, you get the idea, right? So... Um, an ISO certification is a quality assurance cert, and it'll tell you in the contract whether or not you need to be ISO certified. And a big mistake that a lot of people make is they're like, oh, I'm ISO certified, so I'm all good to go. Um, anything that's outside of, um, oops, sorry, I just got a text on my phone, so my, I just lost my train of thought. Um, if the contract says ISO certified and you're ISO certified, keep in mind, that means everybody who handles the product has to be ISO certified. So your distributor has to be ISO certified or your manufacturer has to be ISO certified. <sighs> so everybody who touches the part over its lifespan from the time it cuts manufactured to the time you touch it to the time it goes to DLA has to be ISO certified. We learned that the hard way. Um, the third certification, this is really three certifications that are grouped together, and we're just going to talk about each each one of them. Um, and the reason why I'm putting these all as one is because these are basically socioeconomic certifications. And like, if you're a straight white male that lives in a wealthy area that's not served in the military, this like isn't really going to be applicable to you. But like, if you're anything else outside of that, then it is applicable. And don't worry, if you are a straight white male, then you still qualify for um you can actually qualify for a small business cert and then we're actually going to talk about another kind of certification that you can get even if you're not socioeconomically disadvantaged but the three are hub zone woman owned sdvsb so hub zone stands for historically underutilized business zone right so that means anytime you live in a bad area or an area where there's not a lot of business conducted typically this is the hood or it could be a college town but Typically, college towns are also the hood as well. Like, if you've ever been to Tallahassee, God bless that place. I love it, like, dearly with every fiber of being in my body. Go FSU. Go Knowles. Um, but it's really not a nice area. Like, Baton Rouge um, in LS, like, where LSU is, really not a nice area. I'm trying to think. What else is another college that I've been to? Like, bro, if you've ever been to Yale, I, went to, I got invited to go to a football camp there, bro. New Haven is, like, not a nice area, but it's a hub zone right so historically underutilized business business zone and the government has this set aside because they want to give more business to companies that are not um in areas where business would typically be conducted right so to qualify for this you have to be in a hub zone and then at least i think it's like some arbitrary number like 35 or 38 percent of your employees i want to say it's closer to like 35 but it, the rule, a good rule of thumb is like if one third of your employees live in a hub zone, then you qualify um, to apply for the hub zone cert, right? Now, the thing about hub zone that you don't get with other certifications is your pricing can be up to 10% higher than the next competitor's pricing. So that's sweet. Now, the next thing. Oh, also, um, or never mind, never mind. We'll talk about that next. Then woman-owned small business, so WOSB. So the thing about a WOSB is the business has to be at least 51% owned by a woman, right? And it used to be that you could self-certify this, but now you have to fill out paperwork and do it with the SBA. And as you can imagine, a lot of people that had woman employees are like a guy would start a business and then, whew, I don't know, what's wrong with me? A guy would start a business and then he'd be married and then he put his um wife down on like the WOSB but then they'd pick up the phone or like the SBA would call and ask questions and then the guy would pick up the phone and be like oh can we speak to and then he'd be like oh she's not here right now and the SBA would keep calling and then they'd be like okay every fucking time we call she's not here but she's a majority owner of the business WTF 
So now you have to certify with the SBA, all right? Um, and a woman-owned small business is really good because there's a lot of set-asides for it, right? And once I tell you guys the third one, I'll kind of explain how these all work in unison and like the applicability of all of them. Then the next one is the SDVOSB, so Service Disabled Veteran-Owned Small Business. There's also Veteran-Owned Small Business, which does qualify for a set-aside, but for whatever reason, I believe in like late 2022, DLA just got rid of the VOSB icon, like the set-aside icon on dibs. Um, but yeah, if you're a service disabled, veteran owned small business, you just fill out your, mil you provide your military paperwork and whatever it is that they ask for. I don't know the military ID number. I'm a civvy, I'm a civilian, um, or not to the FAA, I'm not, but, um, yeah, you just provide them whatever information it is that they're asking for your medical discharge, your service, um, your service induced disability, right? And then you become an SDVOSB, which is sweet. Now let's talk about how HUBZone, WOSB and SDVOSB all come together. So HUBZone, we talked about it, it could be 10% higher than the next person's, right? Now, the government, they actually rotate the priority of those three um, certifications like throughout the year, right? So at some points in the year, they're like, okay, we wanna hit all of our HUBZone goals, or maybe we wanna focus on HUBZone, um, for the first two months of the fiscal year so that way we can focus on the other two later on, right? So they rotate. So sometimes it's woman-owned small business as the priority. Sometimes it's SDVOSB as the priority. Sometimes it's the hub zone as, this, as the priority. And then also keep in mind that depending on who you're doing business with, like we're talking about specifically for DLA and dips, right? So I know that they rotate. But I know if I'm selling something and the end use is like the VA, like Veterans Affairs Office, I know that primarily they're going to focus on SDVOSB stuff, right? Now let's talk about like how these are applicable if you know you don't qualify for any of these, right? So you can partner up with a company to do this, to, to bid on contracts, even though you don't qualify for any of these set asides, right? So if you're a straight white male, but you know a woman um, who's registered and doing business with DLA, the way that it works is you're gonna go, you're gonna get the quote from your supplier, right? They're gonna give you, the supplier's gonna give you your preferred pricing, and then you're gonna give it to your woman-owned small business that you have like a legal agreement with, like please draft up an agreement. Um, but honest, I say please draft one up, but like at Two Lines Airspace, we do a lot of our stuff on good faith, and then only after we've printed money, then we're like, okay, let's sign paperwork, because it's kind of a waste to get a lawyer involved, it's like you're not gonna make any money. But yeah, so if you're a straight white male, you get your pricing, you get your quote, right? and then you find a woman owned small business, right? Then you give them the quote, they bid on it, and then they place the order, uh, they place the order through you, they get the past performance, you get the business with your, with your vendor and distributor kind of thing, right? So that's kind of how that partnership works. It's going to be very good to stack your chips, be like Thanos and get all of the infinity stones in your gauntlet. If you can get, if you're already one of these, if you're already hub zone, woman owned or service disabled veteran owned small business, find and partner with somebody, get at least two of them. Cause with one, yeah, it helps. Like I'm not gonna sit up here and deny that it doesn't help, but with two of them, you're dangerous. With three of them, you're a fucking weapon. Um, so let's talk about the next cert. The fourth third is CMMC, Cybersecurity Maturity Model Compliance. Now, I'm not gonna talk too much about this cert because I just made a video explaining cybersecurity. So go watch that video if you wanna know more about it. But basically, it's certifying that you're gonna be in compliance with NIST Sierra Papa 800-171, which is a set of cybersecurity rules that are outlined in the, in the DFARS, Defense Federal Acquisition Regulation Standards. And then there's three levels of compliance that you can be in um, with this cert, right? So there's level one, level two, level three. It used to be five levels, they consolidated it to three. So um, you wanna make sure that your CMMC level one, at least by January 1st, 2026, Go watch my video where I talk a little bit more about that on Cybersecurity Explained. Um, the fifth cert, which I personally believe to be one of the most valuable, but also the mis most misused, right? So it's like, it's like having a gun. A gun makes you a threat. A gun allows you to ensure your safety. A gun makes it so that way people typically won't fuck with you. If somebody breaks into your house and then you up that five, they're gonna be like, oh shit, I'm gonna put it back, I'm walking away. Please let me escape with my life kind of thing, right? So it ensures that, but people also are very irrational with guns and they use guns in extremely unsafe ways and they do really bad things and they're not certified or don't receive proper training with, with guns, right? So it's a, it's a weapon, right? It's, it's, you can do a lot of damage with it, but you gotta make sure that you know how to use it. So an 8A certification 
is a certification that you can get from being socio or economically disadvantaged or being prejudiced against, right? So typically gender discrimination, racial discrimination, I'm trying to think, gender discrimination, maybe you just live in like a poor neighborhood. If you're disabled, that could be one thing. Um, and basically, if you can prove in any single way that you've been discriminated against, the government will, um, you could possibly get, you know, your 8A certification. Also, the tribal 8A certification as well, that's a really big one. So if you can prove that, like, you come from, like, um, any indigenous peoples, like, here in America, like, ethnically, um, that's a really, really big one. Like, tribal 8A cert certification is a really big one. That makes you el eligible for sole source contracts. And keep in mind, all of these certs um, that are, like, um, Hub Zone Woman on SDVOSB and 8A certification and the Small Business Certification, all of those, they might not be published as such on divs, right? But if you bid on a contract and then you have the ability to deliver on the contract, it counts towards like their quota, if you will. And when I say they, it counts towards DLA's quota, if you will, on, you know, how much money they allocated towards, you know, whoever's in that set aside. So you basically get to check a box and help them make progress on their on their goals right but keep in mind with the 8a certification you literally only have nine years to use it it's a silver bullet so a lot of times people come to me i'm like oh i'm getting my 8a certification i'm like bruv you can't even read the first page of a solicitation what are you doing getting your 8a certification by the time you understand your left from your right and down from up in government contracting you will have already used two three years of it like please refrain so only get your 8a certification when you know you're ready to print money from it and you know how to use it and you know what it means so those are my five best government contracting certifications to get in 2024. Um, click the link down below. And um, yeah, click click the link down below. Check out the new NAMYAD website. We've just updated it with like sweet testimonials and stuff. Check that out. Um, two free PDFs, the how Richard made 500K in nine months with DLA PDF, how we basically coached him to that point. And then our free acronym sheet, those are in my Instagram bio, um, or you can get them on um, on our website, right? So those are two free guides, um, two free pieces of information. And then our next boot camp, space is filling up quickly. Um, it's limited, and you guys have, at the time of this recording, nine days to be able to sign up and register for it at a discounted rate. So click the link down below, um, get it at a discounted rate. Or if you feel like you're fucking stuck and you feel like you're just watching all my videos and like it makes sense, but not really, or maybe it makes sense and you don't really understand how to apply this stuff, then book a call, get some coaching, the team will take care of you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Not only am I looking forward to your success, I'm sure of it. Let's go print those dollars, baby.